point of inflection of trigonometric functions. So this is a very interesting question. I like your attention on this and try to understand each and every step as we move on. The question here is determine point of inflection for y equals to sine square x where x is between 0 to 2 pi. Now what is point of inflection? Point of inflection is a point where concavity changes, right? So that is the point which we are looking for. So let's write down what we are looking for. So point of inflection, let me write point of inflection is a point where concavity changes, right? Now concavity changes means what? It's kind of if it is concave up, it becomes concave down. That is what it is. And that is tested with the help of second derivative, right? If second derivative is positive, right? If second derivative is positive, then it's like concave up. If second derivative is negative, around the point, I mean, you get concave down. So let me let me explain it once again. So point of inflection is concavity change, which we do with the help of second derivative test, okay? Now, for that, first condition is that second derivative f double dash x should be equal to zero. That gives us a critical number, okay? Then what we do is, we test around the critical number. That means, let us say we get a critical number somewhere here. Then we test around the critical number. That means we take up a point on the left side and on the right side and plug in the value in the second derivative. If the value is positive, then it is concave up, like I've shown here, right? If the value is positive, it'll be concave up. If the value is negative, it'll be concave down. Since the concavity changes at this zero of, of second derivative, we say a point of inflection exists. But if there is no change in concavity, then point of inflection will not exist, right? So that is what is a kind of background for you, okay? Now let's get back to the question. So that means we need to find second derivative for y equals to sine square x, right? So let's write down y equals to sine square x. And that means y dash should be equal to 2 times sine x times derivative of sine x, which is cos x. If you remember, 2 sine x cos x can be written as sine 2x. It's a good idea to write that. Otherwise, when we find second derivative for this, like we'll, we'll have to use the product rule and simplify things like that, it will waste a lot of time. Okay, so this is a good idea. Now, derivative of sine 2x is, we are trying to find second derivative now, is cos 2x times derivative of 2x, which is 2. So we get 2 cos 2x as our derivative. Now, to find point of inflection, we are saying that second derivative should be 0. That means y dash, second derivative, y double dash should be equal to 0. Now, when is this function 0? The cosine function, as you remember, is kind of like this. Let me, let me sketch it here, right? It helps. Now, as you can see, cosine function is 0 at two points where it is pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. These are the two points in the domain of 0 to 2 pi. You get these two answers for 2x, right? Now, the question says y equals to sine square x and x is between 0 to 2 pi. Let's look into this constraint. Constraint is limitations of x value. So we are given x is greater than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 2 pi. In our question, we have 2x, not just x. So what should 2x be? So that means 2x should be, I'll multiply both by 2, right? In this inequality, I get 4 pi. Do you see that? So when we are trying to equate y double dash or the second derivative to 0, we not only get two points, we get actually 4. Because we have to go in the interval of 4 pi. Do you understand? That is something which I wanted to share with you. So, we can write here, y double dash equals to 0 implies that 
2 cos 2x equals to 0. Now that is possible for 2x equals to pi by 2, right? That is one value, 3 pi by 2. Now we have to go in the domain 0 to 4 pi for 2x, right? So we can add 2 pi to these. One more cycle, correct? When you add 2 pi, 2 times 2 is 4, you get 5 pi by 2 and 7 pi by 2. Do you see that? So these are the four possible solutions. Now for each solution, actual value of x is how much? We'll divide them by 2. And so we get x is equals to pi by 4, 3 pi by 4, 5 pi by 4, and 7 pi by 4. So these are the possible points where we could have point of inflection. Correct? Now what we need to test is against each point at pi by 4, if I plug in in y double dash equation which is cos 2x on left and right side of it, what do I get positive or negative value? This is what I need to test. If I do get, that means my point of um, uh, concavity, point of inflection exists as the concavity changes, right? So we'll, we'll have to test each and every point here, right? So let me draw this axis again, right? And let us assume that this is pi by 4. So let's get back to the original figure which I have here. So what I will do, kind of, I will show you pi by 2 is here, right? So where is pi by 4? Pi by 4 will be here. Correct. Anyway, so when I write pi by 2, pi by 4 here, it actually becomes pi by 2, right? So in the equation, if I substitute let me do with one of those and then it will be clear for all, right? Let's do it for one. So let me test the point. Our function here is y double dash is 2 cos 2x, right? 2 cos 2x. That is, let me write here, 2 cos 2x is what we're trying to check on either side. So when I write pi by 4 here, what do I get? I get here 2 cos 2 times pi by 4, that is 2 cos pi by 2, right? So that means this point is pi by 2 for me, right? Pi by 2 for me. And I'm checking either side of pi by 2. As you can see from the graph, on the left side, you are in quadrant 1. On the right side, you are in quadrant 2, where cos is negative. And therefore, our value changes from positive to negative. Since the value changes from positive to negative, we have a point of inflection. When we plug in 3 pi by 4, 2 times 3 pi by 4 gives me 3 pi by 2. And in that case, second derivative changes from negative to positive. And therefore, again, we have a point of inflection. So at all these points, and that is repeated, right? In all these points, we do have point of inflection. Correct? And so all these four are our answers. So we can write down our answer as point of inflection for the given function in the given domain is x equals to pi by 4. Now let me check 5 pi by, let me check the other two also. 3 pi by 4, right? We have checked these two. Now 3 pi by 4 will mean what? So 3 pi by 4, I mean 5 pi by 4 will mean what? 5 pi by 4 in the equation, we'll write. So let me check for 5 pi by 4, okay? So f double dash, which is this, x at 5 pi by 4 will be 2 times cos of 2 times 5 pi by 4 or 5 pi by 2, right? Now 5 pi by 2 means what? 1 pi by 2. This is, we are in here, 1 pi by 2, 2 pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 4 pi by 2, and 5 pi by 2, correct? Now, as you can see, if you move from left and right, you are changing the cost value from positive to negative, right? Do you see that? And therefore, the concavity will change. 
So these are also points of inflection. So we get 5 pi by 4 and 7 pi by 4. So all four are our answers for this particular question. Correct? So that's a very interesting question. I'd like you to go through it and understand how we check this, right? The concavity change on either side of these points. And therefore, we have a point of inflection at these critical points. I hope that's absolutely clear to you. Thank you.